Hi everybody, I hope you're all well. My name's Emily and this is Ready Steady Sew. So. so today I am here to bring you my September and October makes video. I didn't do a September makes video because I didn't actually sew a lot in September. I think I made one, no, two or three items in September, which I didn't think was worth a video. So I have combined it with October because I managed to get quite a bit of sewing done in October. I was very lucky that um, my county, the local authority I work for, does have a two week half term in October. So I did get quite a bit of sewing done. So I've managed to get lots of things to show you. If I look down, it's because I've got my notebook here on my table in front of me and I've just got a few bits written down. So I may glance at it occasionally to just to check, but I'll just count. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I've got eight items to talk to you about today. Before so, I show you my makes, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my channel. I now have over a thousand subscribers, which is incredible. I didn't think I would get this amount of subscribers so soon at all, actually. I was happy just to get a hundred subscribers. So thank you very much to everyone if you've subscribed and thank you for watching, thank you for commenting and liking. All your support is really appreciated. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. I would love to get to 2,000 subscribers and I just love having people comment below. I love chatting to people and making sewing friends. So thank you very much for your support. So my first make that I'm going to talk about is this top that I'm wearing. Now, they're not in any particular order because I can't remember the order that I made them in, but I made this one in October. This is one of the more recent makes that I have I've made. And this is the Freya top by Tilly and the Buttons. This is from Tilly's second sewing book, which is called Stretch, if you can see that there. And it, this book is all about jersey, it's all for jersey patterns. And if I just find you the line drawings of the top, there you go, you will see that I have made this version here, the first one, which is um, three quarter length sleeve and it's got, a, they call it a mock neck, which is like a mock turtleneck. So yeah, it's a really simple make. Um, I would say if, you're, if you've never sewn jersey before, I'd say this is definitely something that you can try for your, one of your first jersey makes. You can make it into a dress, you can add um, a cowl neck, you can add a turtleneck. There's lots of different options. There's also an option of, you can add like a frill along the front. I've not tried that yet, but I would like to try that at some point. But it's a really nice, simple top that you can wear with lots and lots of different things. I made it in this fabric, which I absolutely adore. If you know me at all, you know that I love leopard print. Anything leopard print, I will buy. If fabric is leopard print, I'm drawn to it. I want to buy it automatically. So I saw this on a good fabrics website and I knew I needed some in my life. I think um, they've sold out of it a couple of times, but I think they are restocking it soon. I'll, I'll put a link to it below anyway, and you can check it out. And also check out good fabrics website because all the fabric on there has some sort of sustainable, environmentally friendly credential. So this is a stuff fabric. So obviously it's good for the environment. They're all, they're all somehow good. That's why they've got a good, they're called good fabric because that's what they specialise in. As I say, I will put pictures of any patterns or um, fabrics in here if I need to. And I will link to fabrics, <clears throat> sorry, my voice is going there. And I will link to fabrics and shops down below. But this was one of my first makes. And this is the Frey Top by Tilly and the Buttons. My next make is another one of Tilly's patterns. And it is the Tabby 30 from Tilly's Make It Simple book. And again, I'm sure you've seen this pattern many, many times. It's been incredibly popular and this is probably my fourth or fifth version, but I decided to make the ringer T version. So this, it's a normal pattern, but I've added some cuffs and neckband in a different color ribbon. So that's the picture in the book. And then I will show you my version. I made it in a really, really pretty floral um, jersey, cotton jersey that I got from Material Girl Laura. And it, um, yeah, it's really bright and colourful. It's got these like pansies and this supposed to be dandelions maybe on them. And I and I bought um, a bright pink. Don't look at my unneat stitching, but I bought um, a bright pink ribbon to use for the cuffs 
and for the neckband which I think just adds a nice bit of detail to it a nice pop of colour I will insert pictures of you wearing these as I've said but yeah really pretty just a plain standard t-shirt made same as usual for the cuffs I don't know if I'm being really silly but I couldn't find um, a pattern piece for the cuff uh, for the arm so, but all I did well I originally cut a cuff piece for another pattern but then I realised, ah, no, it's going to be too small because that's based to go around the wrist. And obviously, top of your arm up here is bigger than your wrist. So I just kind of did a bit of a trial and error. And I think I ended up cutting this piece that was three quarters of the of the neck band, I think. I can't remember what I did, but I, anyway, it was trial and error to get the, the cuff piece to be the right size because I couldn't find a cuff piece anywhere and, it, and I couldn't see unless I'm being really stupid and blind I couldn't see any measurements anywhere for the cuff pieces for that but yeah this is one of the makes I made I believe I made this in October I think I cut it out a few weeks before but um, I sewed it up in October because I just wanted a quick kind of palette cleanser quick make working through some of my fabrics in my stash so yeah that's one of the things I made in October my next make I'm going to share with you is I think the first thing I made in September. So this was something I made probably around the middle of September and it is the Sew Over It Pussy Bow Blouse. Let me find the top of it to show you. So yeah, I made it in a viscose, which I got again from Material Girl Laura. I was a huge fan of her shop. Uh, I bought this fabric over the summer. I didn't quite know what to make with it. And then I decided I was going to make a Pussy Bow Blouse with it. I'll put a picture of the pattern here so you can see it and I have made the pussy bow blouse before but this time I decided to make a sleeveless version. Now it was a spur of the moment decision to make it sleeveless. I had cut the sleeves out and I was intending to make a sleeved version but then what did I, I did something, I think I did something wrong or I just decided I'd, I fancied the sleeveless version. I think it was still quite warm at that time and I thought I might get a bit more wear out of the sleeveless one because I could wear it in the summer and the winter with like cardigans and jumpers and stuff um so i didn't alter the armhole at all i believe when you are changing a sleeved top to a sleeveless top you're supposed to alter the arm the curve of your arm on it somehow i'm not quite sure I'm not very technical but i didn't do that because as i say i was planning to make a sleeved version and all i did was i added i've had some bright blue bias binding and all i did was i added that around the armhole to finish it off to make it nice and neat and it fits me perfectly fine. As I said, I'll, I'll put pictures in of me wearing it. But it fits me really, really nicely. And I do like that pop of colour in the armhole. I think it just adds a nice little detail. But this viscose is really quite soft, actually. It's really nice to wear, really comfy. Again, Pussy Bear Blouse is a great pattern for work. I wear it quite a lot. Um, Yeah. Big, yeah. It's just really nice, really pleased with this one. So yeah, another piece for my work wardrobe that I've got a lot of wear at so far. And that is one of my makes from September. Okay, on to make number four. This is also one that I made in September. And I was really excited to make this one because this was one, the first thing that I made as a pattern insider for Sew Over It. So as you may know, I am now a pattern insider for Sew Over It. And that means I get access to their patterns before they're released so I can make them up and show you what they look like on a range of body types. So and so I decided I was going to make September's pattern and it was the Peggy trousers. Again, I'll insert a picture of the pattern. I have got the PDF pattern, not paper pattern, because I get the PDFs for free from Sew Over It, but I don't get paper patterns for free. So I use the PDF pattern and these are my trousers. I will put a proper picture of me wearing them. But I made them in a really, really, really nice um, Garbadine suiting fabric from Minerva. It's really, really good quality. Re I really like it. I'm, I'm tempted to buy some more and make some more trousers in this fabric because it's perfect for like office wear. What you'd wear, you know, for smart trousers or, or suits or blazers, those types of things. It's really nice. You can see it's like a twill. I don't know if it's coming up on the camera, but there is a twill. Of the hair stuck on it a twirl pattern twirl weave in it anyway the the peggy trousers are a really really nice pattern now i'm not brilliant at fitting trousers I, I i'm not pattern fitting and adjusting and stuff is not my thing i would like to be good at it but i'm not at the moment so all i did was i made i think i made an 18 on the waist and i made a 16 on the hip and i graded between the two because um 
my waist has always been a bigger size than my hips and that it was fine for my waist but I also think that's partly because it is elasticated so the back and like three quarters of it is an elasticated waist which helps with the fitting of that but that left me some um excess fabric like around my hips and around like the crotch area on my trousers and I don't quite know how to change that I would like to I mean these are perfectly fine I could wear them but they do look a little bit big I think they're meant to be a bit more fitted than they are I saw that I think it was Esther from nine to stitch she's also a pattern insider I saw that she had graded her trouser leg all the way down to the smallest size by the ankle. I thought that could be something I could try because I really like the look of hers. Hers were really, really stunning. So I could try that, but I might take these apart from kind of my hip because they've not got pockets in, which is good, which makes it easier. I might take them apart from the hip and just take some out, pin them, put them on, pin them to me where I want them to be and take a bit of fabric out of the side. But I do really, really like them. And, and as I say, the fabric is really good quality. So they feel like a really good quality pair of trousers. And I, I do like the style. They're, they're quite an involved make. They're not a simple make. Um, I love the paper bag waist. But they have actually got a zip fly. So that does make it a bit more involved than a, another pair of trousers. But I did enjoy making them. I learned quite a lot making them and it was really nice part of the um, pattern insiders team but yeah my peggy trousers were another one of my makes for october i say i'll put pictures in of the pattern and of me wearing them but yeah i would like to maybe go back and take a bit of excess fabric out of the hips if anyone's got any tips and suggestions of how i can alter the fit please comment below because as i say pattern adjusting and fitting is not something i'm brilliant at i would like to be better at it but i just i, I don't know how to do it my my go-to method of fitting is to try it on and pin it on and then sew that and cut off the excess that's probably not the best way to do it but that's how i uh, that's how i tend to fit things that don't suit me or don't fit me properly but yeah make number four was the peggy trousers and they were made in september okay my next make is also a pair of trousers and i made these back in september i think i believe it was a september make and they're very similar to the Peggy trousers that I just spoke about. And these are the Megan Nielsen Opal trousers. Now, if you have watched any of my previous videos, you will know that I've been really keen to make these ones. You can make either a wide leg version or a tapered leg version. And you can add a paper bag waist or a um, just elasticated waist. And there are options for shorts as well. There you go. So I made the paper bag waist with the tapered leg. I made them very similar actually to the ones on the front and I'd been looking for ages for a pattern like this and then Megan Nielsen released this pattern so I was really really pleased about that. So I will put a picture in of me wearing them but I think I would class this one as a sewing fail. I don't love them and I've not worn them and I don't think I'm going to wear them anytime soon. I will show them to you, they look huge. But I will show them to you, these are them. So again, they've got the paper bag waist. I've put the belt on and the belt loops for this one. Uh, this pair has got pockets as well, inseam pockets, which is really nice. And this one does have a tapered leg. You can't really tell from there, but it has got a tapered leg. Um, but the main difference between this and the Peggy trousers is this one doesn't have a fly front. It's just a plain straight leg. There's no fly, there's no darts or pleats in it it's actually quite simple to make so these are definitely the easier of the two pairs it was interesting making the two pairs back to back i think I made, I made the peggy trousers first then i made these straight afterwards and it's interesting to compare the two because the similar styles both both paper bag waists but i think mm, i think i prefer the peggy trousers by sew over it more um, they're harder to make, they are tr more tricky to make, mainly because of the fly, but I just think the fit is more flattering, and I think the peggy trousers come higher up on your waist, it's definitely, it's a definite high waist, whereas these don't come up as high, so they, they don't seem to be as flattering a fit on me, I like my high waist trousers to be high waist, not to be, you know, kind of in between where it should be, so yeah, I mean, it's a shame because I really like them, and I, w I want them to look lovely, but they just don't. It could be fitting. I could take them apart at the seams and I could try and grade them in a bit to make them a bit um, a bit th thinner, is that the word? 
on the leg, make them a bit thinner. I get, it's the same fitting issue that I've got with the Peggy trousers, but I think with the Peggy trousers, because of the material and because of the style of the trousers, I think I can get away with it more. The Peggy trousers has, has got pleats on the front and the back, which kind of add to the shape of the trousers and makes it a little bit more flattering. Whereas these don't, these are just straight up and down, no pleats, no darts, no zip. Again, simple to make, quick to make, but not as flattering to wear. So yeah, I think I prefer Peggy for the reasons I've said. But I would like to learn to fit and try these again and say in a, in a drapier fabric, maybe like a tensile twill. I think they look nice in that, something with a bit more drape to it. I think it needs a bit of body, but also you want it to have a little bit of drape as well. Again, I might try the version B, the elasticated waist wide leg. I think they'd look lovely. And I could also try grading the legs even more because I have got one of my legs is really skinny. Like my legs are different skinnynesses, is that the right word? But one of my legs is skinnier than the other. And so if I wear anything really baggy that's not supposed to be baggy, like these aren't supposed to be baggy baggy, um, it looks ridiculous. So I could try and taper, that's the word, I could try and taper them more to the bottom so they go to like the smallest size. I could try that maybe. But yeah, I, I would say these opal trousers are a bit of a sewing fail, which is a bit of a disappointment actually because I was really excited about making them. But you never know, I might uh, make them another day in a different fabric and try again. My next make is actually my most recent make. I made this last weekend, I think it was. And it's one I had on my last fabric haul as well. I think the fabrics were on that. And it is the Sue Avery Heather dress. I will put a picture of the pattern in here. And this is my version. I made the colour blocked version. And I made it in a lovely plain black ponte with a kind of grey zebra print ponte as well. Again, I'll put pictures of me wearing it here. If you don't know, the Heather dress is designed for jersey fabrics, for specifically for ponte, um, heavyweight jerseys, that type of fabric. And it's it's a great, quite simple pattern. It is made using, e well, you can either colour block it like I have, or you can make it all in one fabric. It's up to you. And the thing I like about it, besides it being jersey and comfy, is that it has got pockets. So in this curve here at the front, there are seams built in. So there is pockets built in to the pattern. So if I hold it up again, you can see the pockets are around your hips area. Uh, this is the second one of these I've made. I made my first one about three or four years ago when the pattern was first released. And I loved it, but obviously I've put weight on since then, so that no longer fits me. So I decided to make myself another dress because I wear it a lot. Um, it's really comfy. It's great for work because it's comfy, but I think it still looks quite smart. You know, you can kind of get away with it being suitable for work as well, while also being really comfy. The only mistake I made, which was very silly of me, was on the neckband. Um, it's a 1.5 seam allowance all the way through, but then I didn't read the instruction properly. And on the neck, you said, I, you're supposed to do a one centimetre seam allowance. I did a 1.5 again, so my neck band is a little bit skinnier, a little bit thinner than it's supposed to be, but I don't think it matters. You can't really tell. I don't think you'd know unless I pointed it out. When I made these the first time, uh, they were too baggy on my hips. They are, it's, the dress is supposed to be tight around your body, but then gets a little bit looser around your hips, which it does. But when I made it the first time, it was far too loose, like it looked ridiculous. So I had to do my usual fitting technique of pinning it where I wanted it to sit and then sewing that up. And that was fine. But obviously I've made these a different size and my hips must have caught up with my stomach because uh, I didn't really need to take anything off the hips on this one. I probably could if I was being really picky. It's probably a tiny bit too big around my hips, but I don't think it's enough it, it doesn't bother me enough it's not noticeable enough and i can't be bothered so you know i'm not someone to take something apart for the sake of it so uh, i'm quite happy with it as it is and i love it and it's really comfy and i can't wait to wear it lots in the winter especially to work my second to last make is also one that i made in october i made it during half term and it is the lotta dress by tilly and the buttons this is one of her most recent patterns she's released and it's a dress that can be made in both jerseys and woven fabrics, which is a great, very versatile pattern. And I like it because it's got the elasticated waist. It reminds me a little bit of the indigo, but with elasticated waist. It's I think it's a similar pattern, but I do I do like that it's got that waistband in. 
Uh, I'm not going to show you the finished dress because it's actually a blog post for Crafty So and So. So they very kindly gave me an allowance of money to spend on whatever I wanted for my blog project. I chose the fabric, I chose the pattern, and I got matching thread. So I had to put a little bit of money to it myself, only about three or four pounds. And then they sent me it, and I am going to send them a blog post and photos very soon. And the blog post will be coming out, I think, next week or the week after. I can't remember. But I'm just going to give you a sneak peek. This is the fabric. It is a leopard print, surprise, surprise, in, on a black base in a viscose poplin. So it is a viscose. It has got plenty of drape, as you can see, but it does have a bit more, a little bit more body and structure than viscose usually would. And it is completely opaque as well. So as you can see, you cannot see me through the fabric. So yeah, I'm not going to talk about this fabric, this meat very much because it is for a blog post and I will speak more about it probably next month. I will show you in great detail then. The final make that I've got to show you is the one that I am the most proud of. I'm so, 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 so pleased with myself. If you've seen any of my previous fabric haul videos, you will know that I was planning on making the Sapporo coat by Papercut Patterns, which is this one here. You can see it. So... As coats go, it's quite a simple coat. It is a cocoon shape. It doesn't have any fastenings. If I show you the line drawings, you can see that I made the longer length version, this one here. And you can see that, again, no fastenings. It's quite simple, but it has got a seam running through the middle of it and on the arms, it's got like a drop shoulder and it has got built-in pockets as well. And I did line it, which I'm very pleased with. So let me show you it. In fact, I might put it on because it's so beautiful. Uh, let me find it first of all, find the top. So I made it in a lovely blue Melton wool that I got from Minerva and I've used a plain black anti-static lining, basic lining, again from Minerva. And I did also remember to put in a, a label, it's a Carlin Machines, one of a kind label, because I'm very proud of myself. So let me put it on for you, one second. So this is my coat. Now, before I made it, I did read quite a few different posts, blog posts and Instagram posts about this coat. It has been incredibly popular, so there is plenty of things to read about it. And it, I decided to size down, okay? Now, some people said they probably could have sized down two sizes, and I probably could have actually sized down another size, but I made it, well, the, the size chart goes from a one to an eight, but on the pattern it's one two three four and then five and six are the same measurement and seven and eight are the same measurement now my measurements would have put me in the seven i think seven size so i made i cut out the size five to six which is fine i definitely wouldn't want it any bigger i probably could have cut out the four and it would have been fine but at least with this one i can definitely get a jumper or something big underneath but i'm so so pleased with it so proud of it i'll stand back a little bit so you can see it a bit better so you can see it's got a, like a cocoon shape it has got the pockets built in you can see the seam at the side in the middle and on the arm you can see the seam there yeah i made the longer length trouser uh, longer length trousers the longer length of the coat which you can't really see but i did um do the mitered corners if you can see that very well probably not the best example but it had mitered corners yeah i had to bag out the lining as well which i've never actually done before i apologize if you can hear lots of banging my boyfriend's cooking dinner downstairs so we decided to get all the trays out right now make a lot of noise bless him but yeah this is my Sapporo coat by paper cut patterns and i'm really 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 pleased with it really, really proud of it i love it this fabric is gorgeous i was really lucky i got it on sale at minerva it was supposed to be 20 pounds a meter but i think i paid eight pounds a meter i think eight pounds a meter for wool is uh not a bad at all a bit of a bargain it's really soft and smooth i feel really warm in it already so yeah and it's snuggly so I'm really proud of this. I can't wait to, to go somewhere nice, hopefully, to wear it. I feel like it's a bit too nice for it, but I might have to wear it to work anyway. But I'm really proud of myself. I made a coat. It looks like a coat. It's lined and everything. And yeah, this is my most proudest make of 
October. I made this in October half term, so really pleased with myself. And it actually didn't take me as long as I thought it would. I probably made it in a couple of days, probably. I mean, once I cut it out, it wasn't too difficult. Um, the instructions were good, really good. I like everything's on like recycled paper and cardboard. It's all very environmentally friendly. Um, the only bit I was a bit confused with was when it came to attaching the lining. I was, because I've never done that before. I was a little bit like, hmm, what do I do? But I just did a Google search, looked on YouTube. There's quite a few sew alongs actually on YouTube for this pattern that various people have done. And there's lots and lots of blog posts as well. So it is worth checking out um, all those different resources online if you're making this. But I recommend it. As I say, as coats go, I think it's one of the easier ones as there's no fastenings. And yeah, it comes together quite quickly. It's really an enjoyable make. And I'm really, really proud of myself. So that is all my makes for September and October. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And comment below. I love chatting to you. I love getting to know people. And if you've got any tips for fitting trousers, or fitting in general, but fitting trousers in particular, please share them with me. I would love to get better at fitting. But thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.